Oh, hi YouTube, how are you going? Well today we're going to have a look at the Hawk, but in flight. And what is it like to fly? Is it worth buying? What is the Vario like? How does it perform? What's the artificial horizon like? I probably won't go into that too much because I haven't really had a chance to test it properly. Is the Hawk worth the money? That is the key question that I'm going to try and help answer for you. I'm also going to try and not hit this mountain. We should probably watch out for Mount Mangatau tree there. Okay, I thought I'd try showing you what the Vario is doing and I'll tell you what I feel like the glider is doing as well. So right now, that blue arrow is the Hawk Vario and the red arrow is the normal Total Energy Probe Vario. So we're going to compare how they go and now see the Hawk is going up and I did feel that just as it started going up. So we're coming under a cloud now. There we go. I feel pressure now. More pressure, more pressure. Okay, I'm going to go around there. That's pretty accurate. I'm definitely seeing the hawk go up about the same time as I feel the pressure in my bum. So here's the track, how it's gone. Here's the cloud out the window. You can see once you're in the thermal, it tends to stay about the same as a normal Vario, pretty well. Not a lot of difference. We'll see what happens when I get nearer the top. So I feel pressure there now. When I say pressure, I mean I feel acceleration. So what I can't feel is when it's steadily climbing, I cannot feel that, but I can feel changes in speed, yes, uh, vertical speed. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going now. I'm gonna roll out and go straight ahead. And I feel it dropping now. Oh, yep, yeah, there is a little bit more going out there. As I'm leaving, there's a bit of a line of energy. And you just see how much quicker the hawk is at telling me that. Apparently the beeping noise is set the to, to the total energy, the red one. Okay, and I'm now out of that cloud. I'm now approaching another cloud here. So we'll see what happens with this one. Don't forget to smile. Okay, I'm coming under the cloud now. I feel sink. I don't feel any lift yet. Don't really feel anything yet. Don't feel anything yet. So that's really interesting because that's exactly what I feel. It's the blue one. The red there was the gust. Here we go now, I feel a bit of pressure. coming to the end of the cloud that's probably where it's feeding into yeah I can definitely feel that now very nice okay a bit of gusts there getting bumped around I mean okay and I'm coming out of it now so you can see there's no cloud above me now. Just speeding in the front leading edge. I'm going into wind, so the wind's going this way, so the thermals are feeding into the from the front. So that view looks good. That's my way home though. It's gonna be a bit tricky to get home, I suspect. 
Now the other big advantage of the Hawk is it comes with a built-in artificial horizon. Now that for me makes it worth the money to invest in because to buy a separate one would cost hundreds or thousands of dollars so you're getting that as part of the Hawk subscription. I believe it's only until April so I wish Alex would change their mind on that and always supply the artificial horizon with the Hawk but apparently they're going to, they, they might stop offering it with it so you'll have to buy that separately. I switched over the Hawk to the Audio Vario and that's working very well. I think I'll just keep it on that quite frankly after testing it. I think it works great. So I guess I can get rid of my total energy probe now. the convergence line I think. The wind, thanks to Hawk, says 10 knots coming in from the side here and I notice it's dropping. It was 11 to 12 when we were out more. Now that we're on the side of the mountain it's actually slowing down a bit. You know that's useful information. It means yes, is this convergence going up? Is it working? Are we on the correct side of it or not? If we had the wind going the other side the other direction then it might not we might be in the wrong place this one's pretty easy because it's a big black thing and I go in the middle so oh look at that nice convergency five knot climb so just to recap the red arrow is the normal total energy vario and the blue one oh, fell out of it the blue one is the hawk so you can see there is a bit of lag with the red one. It's a lot slower, more dampened. So I'm very impressed with the Hawk uh, Vario, how fast it is. And it matches what I feel very accurately, so that's important. You can see I fell out of it a little bit on the trace there. Keep climbing here under this cloud. Let's see what we can do. So what are you going to do if you can't afford an S100 or an Alex 9000? Maybe you've already got a Vario. There are a couple of alternatives. The first is a new device called the Animoi. And this is basically exactly the same sort of filter that is programmed into the S100 and the Alex 9000 with the Hawk. Except it's a separate standalone unit. What that means is it gives you the wind and an artificial horizon, but it's not a Vario system. And this might be a good option if you already have a good Vario that you're happy with, but you want the accurate wind and an artificial horizon. So this is roughly the same price as an upgrade for the Hawk. Other Vario makers have tried to solve the problem of gusts in their Vario in other ways, and Borgelt is one particular company I can think of. They released a system about a year ago that is a sensor box and it's designed to remove all gusts from your Vario. Any problem with their system is that's all it gives you. It doesn't give you an artificial horizon and it doesn't give you accurate wind. The other problem with that system, it costs 7,000 
dollars to get the whole kit installed and set up so a lot of money much cheaper to just upgrade your s100 so in summary the hawk is it worth it i would argue if you don't have an artificial horizon then it's definitely worth it if you already have bought an artificial horizon then it's a bit more questionable so obviously you get the advantage of a much faster vario so it's much more instant as soon as you hit lift i mean we've been flying around with um vario lag now for 15 20 years for many people and uh you know you get it you adapt to it you get used to it so that's not a big deal i don't think for us in new zealand the wind indicator is really useful we have sea breezes coming in all the time we have convergences and it's really good to know if you're on the correct side of the convergence or not so that to me makes it worthwhile getting as well in new zealand and maybe other countries it's not quite so important what the wind's doing mountain flying i can imagine it'd be very useful so is it worth it i'd say yes overall if you've got the money get it it's a worthy upgrade especially if you've got an alex 9000 of some sort already because then you can have the wind indicator on them on the vario and all your other details on the other one if you only had an s100 then you'll be switching between screens a lot to see your information versus the wind but it's manageable especially if you get the i really highly recommend the remote stick for any alex 9000 or s100 setup all right thanks for watching if you got any questions about the uh the hawk or the s100 or alex 9000 put them in the comments below happy to help and we'll catch you next time